Today, why our brain is hardwired to stereotype and three tactics for avoiding it. Hi, I'm Graham Newell. My speeches and webinars show you how to use the latest brain science insights to make smarter money decisions. Click on subscribe and the bell below to see more of my videos. So how about we take a little test? Consider Debbie. She's 31, quite smart, and fairly quiet. And her hobbies include reading and quilting. Now, is it more likely that Debbie's unmarried, or is it more likely that she's unmarried and she's a librarian? Go ahead and make your choice now. Now, most people choose option two, which is incorrect. So think about it. The second option is a subset of the first one. Option one has just one criteria, being unmarried. But option two has two criteria to meet, being unmarried and working at a library. By definition, option two is less likely. What's going on here is I triggered your stereotyping brain by including the librarian cliche of smart, quiet, reading, and quilting. Logical thinking went out the window because your very flawed human brain latched on to that familiar stereotype. This is an example of a cognitive bias that brain scientists call the representativeness heuristic. This is our brain's hair trigger tendency to categorize both things and people despite the fact that there's insufficient data. Our brain is always seeking to do the most thinking while doing the least amount of work. The way it does that is to constantly categorize everything in the world. This allows us to store more information using less brain space. Ice cream gets put in the tasty category, earthworms in the slimy category. And no matter how hard we fight it, our brain's most comforting habit is to do the exact same thing with people. If I meet two people from a company and they're both aggressive, I may assume that company has an aggressive company culture and that everyone there is aggressive. Astrology has its very foundations in representativeness. Millions of people randomly born in May are assigned Taurus the Bull, and astrology magically endows them with the character traits of being strong, stubborn, hardworking, and tough. How convenient these traits perfectly describe their mascot. And representativeness bias does some of its biggest damage in the world of finance. This happens because your subconscious brain has a tendency to transform today's top-of-mind news headlines into simple-to-understand rules. A lot of tech stocks have experienced huge growth in the last few years, and all it takes is a little subconscious nudge to bias your brain to buy tech stocks. Your conscious brain won't even know it's happening. Brain science clearly shows that most of our financial decisions are made by our subconscious brain. It feels like a perfectly rational choice. But what's happening is that your conscious brain is looking for evidence to support what your subconscious brain has already decided. Some financial planners charge extravagant commissions and fleece their clients. We hear that one story, it triggers the deeply instinctual fear centers of our brain. And suddenly, the entire profession is tainted. And all this happens subconsciously without you even realizing. Why are our brains so quick to judge? Well, the stakes are often sky high when it comes to our money. Thinking about finances is stressful and confusing, and our overworked brain just wants the whole situation to go away. So it's just aching to get rid of the anxiety and fear. So our brain takes a shortcut by jumping to a conclusion. Representativeness bias means we're particularly vulnerable to making money choices without all the facts. If you'd like to learn how other cognitive biases make us overconfident investors, I've got another video for you. Click on the link right here to watch that video now. So how can you avoid representativeness bias and make smarter money choices? Here are three tactics. Number one, double check your data. Before you take action, ask yourself, is this just an instinctual hunch or is it backed up with real data? Don't trust your gut. That's your instinctual brain talking, and it's really bad at making analytical money choices. Tactic number two, double check your mood. Have you just experienced a win or a loss? That's the time to step away and let that elation or disappointment clear from your brain. 
Limit yourself to making financial decisions when your stone-cold analytical brain is fully engaged. And tactic number three, double-check your certainty. Boldly admit your ignorance. Stay clear of sectors where you don't know what you're doing. Sure, new sectors can be exciting, but your lack of knowledge will make you much more prone to representativeness bias and foolish choices. Right now, I'm working on another video about how cognitive biases tempt us to make bad financial choices. If you'd like to be alerted when that video is completed, just click on my face below to subscribe. And be sure to click that alert bell, too. And I've created tons more videos on how brain science can help you make smarter money choices. Click on this box to see the full playlist. I'm Graham Newell, and that's Better Decisions Through Brain Science.